Hey guys, welcome back. So, uh, whether you're finishing furniture or a guitar or basically anything made out of wood, lacquer is one of the most popular and uh, best quality finishes that you can get, really. I shouldn't say best quality. I guess there are lots that are high quality depending on what you're looking for. But particularly if you're going for a satin or a high gloss finish, lacquer tends to be a favorite. And the way things are going now, it's becoming more and more difficult to find things like nitrocellulose lacquer, which are obviously solvent based and hard on the environment, hard on your lungs. But they give a fantastic finish, really. You can get water based lacquer, uh, but a lot, they dry differently, they spray a little differently, and a lot of people really don't like them. So I found a way basically to spray brushing lacquer. And what I've got here is Wadco Gloss Brushing Lacquer. It's solvent based, it's really not designed to be sprayed because it's much too thick. But it gives a pretty good finish. Uh, it passes the fingernail test and the smell test. Well, I have almost no sense of smell, but I've been told it passes the smell test by people who have done it for me uh, after about a month, which is pretty standard, about the same as nitrocellulose lacquer. So if you try and dig your fingernail into it, if after a month it really shouldn't leave much of an impression or any and it stops smelling like solvents so at about that point it's ready to polish it uh, if mixed properly it behaves a lot like a nitrocellulose lacquer I find so what I'm gonna do today is show you how I mix that in order to have it be sprayable basically and then I'll just give a very quick demonstration of spraying it onto a, just kind of a random piece of wood that I have lying around so, <clears throat> let me first talk about what the components are. Obviously, you need your lacquer. Then, in order to thin it down to a consistency where it's more like a spraying lacquer, I'm going to use acetone. Be careful with this stuff. <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty strong. It, it does not make you feel good if you breathe in a bunch of it. So, you're going to want to wear a respirator when you spray this. I would wear a respirator even to mix it. If, uh, if you're not trying to narrate it for the camera. <coughs> and then I've got my lacquer thinner, uh, which I'm going to mix in in uh, a much smaller amount than I would if I was mixing it with nitrocellulose because I've already got it thin with the acetone. And then lacquer retarder, which is designed to slow down the evaporation of the solvents that cause the, uh, the lacquer to dry. Now, I'm not actually going to use this today because it's not very humid around here right now. But if you're in a humid environment or you're finding that you're getting a lot of orange peel and you want to slow down the, uh, the evaporation so that the lacquer has more time to lay out, always a good idea to use, I don't know, like 5 10% lacquer retarder. That's what I go with. But for today, we're going to be using these three ingredients. I'm making it sound like a cookbook. <coughs> I'm going to go with 50% acetone. I know it's a lot, but I want this to be fairly thin. That's how I like to spray my lacquer, it's fairly thin. 33% uh, Watco, and the remaining 17% uh, lacquer thinner. It doesn't have to be exact. I don't expect people to find <laughs> a measuring cup with a hundred little lines on it and count them out. What I've got for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna mix up, I apologize to the Americans, this thing's in, uh, in metric. So I'm going to mix up 120 milliliters of this stuff, 60 milliliters will be acetone, and then I'll pour up to the 100 milliliter line with the lacquer, and then bring it up to the 120 to finish it off with the lacquer thinner. So uh, rather than having you all squint at it, I'll bring the camera in closer here, and you can, I guess, watch me pour it and stir it, and then we'll do a quick spray test. Okay, so like I said, this doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, I've got a, basically a full gallon of acetone here and I've learned over time that if you're pouring out of a very large container into a very small container and said large container is full, you're probably gonna have a bad time. So luckily they've got this, uh, the hole offset, which makes this fairly easy actually. Uh, a little more difficult to get a perfect measurement because I'm not setting this down. But if you just put it up against here with the 
the hole on the, the top side. Then you can get pretty good control when you go to pour it. Uh, hopefully some starts coming out at some point. There we go. And that'll make life a little bit easier. See, so yeah, oh I did. Huh, what do you know? Almost like I knew what I was doing. 60 milliliters. Close that up because acetone evaporates ridiculously fast. Keep that in mind. Next up, I will put some lacquer in here to bring this up to 100 milliliters. Now, I forgot to open the container off camera, which would have been logical. So I'm going to do it now and force you all to watch. You don't need to stir this stuff. If you look into the container, there's nothing to stir in. There's no pigment in it or anything like that. So that makes things a little easier. And what I need is 40 milliliters of this. So I don't want to try and pour 40 milliliters out of this into here. I'll just make a mess. There's really no point. So I'm going to use a spoon. That should be 30. Good. And just a little more. All right, that ought to about do it for that. I'll have to go clean that off at some point. And then finally, the lacquer thinner. I'm only putting in 20 milliliters of this. Assuming I can get it open. Come on, you can. <laughs> Son of a mother duck. There we go. Just gotta be rough with it. Alright, so the last 20 milliliters, luckily this isn't that full, so when I say that, then I F it up. Okay, well, I've overdone it slightly on that. So all I'm going to do to compensate for that is add just a little bit more lacquer because I don't want it to be too thin. Like I said, this isn't a, a very precise science. This is producing, regardless of whether you over pour or not, this is producing a very thin mix. If you prefer to spray it a little thicker, just use less, less acetone, okay? Uh, you don't have to use less lacquer thinner. That's typically what people use to spray lacquer anyway. So the acetone is what's really knocking this stuff down to a very thin spray lacquer like mixture. So just use less of that if you prefer and then you can pass it through a larger nozzle or whatever works for you. So now that I've made a horrible mess out of this, uh, let's get to the spraying part. All right, so just like with nitrocellulose lacquer, we don't want to put this stuff on too heavy. You want to keep it moving fairly quickly. Uh, and same kind of deal, you let it harden for a day, let it dry for a day between coats, and then just spray it again. You don't need to sand between coats. You can if you want to, if you're worried about flattening it out. And then when you're finished with it, you have to let it dry, just hang it up to harden for a month, and uh, then you can go ahead and polish it. So, like I said, I'm just gonna give a quick example of spraying it. I'm not wearing a mask because this is only going to be for a few seconds and I'm in a huge room. Um, but yeah, if you're going to be spraying this stuff, wear a respirator. <laughs> So in case you were curious, I was using a 1.5 millimeter nozzle there. And there we go. Sprays out very nicely, I think, for a brushing lacquer. And that's probably a pretty good option if you're trying to lacquer a guitar and you don't have access to nitrocellulose because you're somewhere where they don't carry the stuff. <laughs> 
due to environmental concerns or whatever the issue happens to be. So I hope that that was helpful for anyone who's trying to spray lacquer um, for whatever reason. And hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. See you next time.